Welcome to devlog number one. Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name is Kyle, and this video is going to be quite a bit different than usual since I'm going to be doing more of a Ben Awad style devlog video. And this is the very first devlog for my careerfair.dev project. And if you're interested in why I was playing guitar at the beginning of this video, it's because I get tons of comments asking me to. So I figured what better way to kick off this series than a little bit of guitar. And if you knew what song I was playing, let me know down in the comments below. It's one of my go-tos for when I'm at the gym. Now, as for what this video is going to be about, like I mentioned, it's going to be about my careerfair.dev project. And this first video devlog, I want to talk all about everything that happened before writing my first line of code. This is going to be like the planning process for how I chose the idea, why I chose the idea, figuring out what goes into the project, and just all the steps that go into before you write your first line of code, because it's actually a ton. I've actually spent more time before writing a single line of code on this project than I have since I started writing code. And that's because I started thinking about and planning this idea over a year ago. Now, the very first thing you need to do when you're starting a business is to find a problem to solve. So many people go about this the wrong way where they find a cool solution, but that solution doesn't really solve any problems people have. So nobody's gonna be paying for that solution, which means your business fails. So you need to find a problem that people have and that you can solve. And one thing that I noticed from running my YouTube channel is tons of people would comment on my videos, email me, send me messages, whatever it was, asking about how to get a job. I got tons and tons of comments, especially from junior developers that say it's too hard to find a job. They've you know put thousands of applications out there. They still can't find a job. They maybe go to interviews, but never hear back. All these different problems related to finding a job and specifically related to like junior developers, like younger developers trying to find their first job. And so I was thinking, you know, how can I capitalize on this? How can I create a product or something that'll help all these people trying to find jobs? Because that's something I'm really passionate about. And I had a lot of ideas stirring around in my head. The very first idea that I thought of was a job board, but instead of just a generic job board like Indeed, it would be a job board specifically for junior developers. Every single job that was posted on that job board would be only for junior developers. I had this idea about a year or so ago, and I thought, you know what, I'm gonna see if this idea has legs, because the next thing that you need to do when you have an idea is you need to test it in the easiest way possible without any work from you. So you need to figure out, do people actually want this solution? Is it a good solution? So what I did is I just went to YouTube, I created a poll, and I essentially made a poll that was like, hey, are you interested in job boards or would you use a job board? And here's the results for that poll that I'll show you. And you'll see that for the most part, people really don't care that much about job boards. Some people are like, oh yeah, I use them. But most are like, I've never heard of them. I never use them or I would never want to use. Them. Now seeing these results kind of really disheartened me because I really thought a job board was going to be a good solution, especially a job board specifically geared towards junior developers. But it just seemed like nobody really cared about or used job boards. And you'll also notice in my language for when I asked people if they use job boards, I didn't say, hey, would you use a job board if it was specifically geared towards junior devs? I just wanted to see, do people currently use job boards? Because if they don't currently use them, the odds of them using a specific job board for just junior devs is really low. I mean, it's not like they're going to convert over to using them if they weren't using them before. So I didn't really want to try to like show that I was creating a new project. I didn't want to like entice that because then people will be like, oh yeah, that sounds really cool. I like that. I just wanted to see what are people's current habits? And this is something that you really need to take into account. You don't really want to ask people generic questions like, hey, do you think this is a good idea or do you think this is cool? Because most people are just going to be like, oh yeah, that's cool. I like that. That's awesome. Because they just want to be nice to you. But if you ask like, do you do X, Y, and Z? Or would you pay me money right now for this thing? Those are better questions to ask because people are going to be much more likely to be honest with you. They'll be like, oh, I never use that. Or they'll be like, you know, I think that's cool, but I would never pay for that. So if you know that, then you immediately know, okay, this is a bad idea. And based on this poll, I knew job board, immediately bad idea. And there was many, many months that went by where I was kind of brainstorming different ideas, trying to figure out what would be the best thing to help people get jobs, especially junior devs. And then I remembered my experience in college. I know when I was in college, a lot of it was useless, but the thing that really stuck out to me was the career fair. The career fair landed me my internship and it landed me my first full-time job. And I had tons of job offers by going to the career fair. So having that career fair resource was really useful for me. 
I tried to think what is the best way for me to bring the career fair to other people? And I realized the best thing would be a virtual career fair because this virtual career fair would be available to anyone, not just college students, but anybody, self-taught boot camp does not matter which means that there is an even playing field for everyone no matter where they learned web development or programming in general. And I wanted this career fair to be specifically geared towards programming and somewhat geared towards web development, but mostly programming because that's kind of the space that I'm in. It's the space I know. That's something that's really important. You need to know what space you know. You need to know what you're passionate about because if you try to start a business in something you're not knowledgeable in or you're not passionate in, you're gonna get burnt out. You're not gonna to wanna to work on it anymore and you're not gonna be able to bring it to where it needs to be to succeed. So if you have some type of passion or knowledge in the sector you're working in, it's really going to help accelerate you. And with me, it's been great because even when I get stuck and don't really want to continue on the project, I'm passionate about bringing jobs to people so I continually push through and work on the project more and more. Another thing that was really promising for me with this project idea was that with COVID, almost every college had to do virtual career fairs for their career fair over the last year or two. And that means that companies are much more used to the idea of a virtual career fair. Because before, they were used to going in person to a career fair and talking to people in person. But over the last year or two, all the career fairs have been online, which means now all these companies have experience and realize online career fairs are also great. So if I can create a virtual career fair that has a lot of the same benefits as a standard school virtual career fair, but also brings in people that aren't in school, that's going to be even more beneficial to companies, which means that companies are going to be willing to pay me for this service. That is at least what I thought when I created this idea and thought this idea through. And I realized that I didn't even have to charge the users for this. I could charge just the companies to post and be a part of the career fair, and I didn't have to charge any of the users, which to me was a big win because I wanted to make this as accessible as possible for the people looking for jobs because my original goal was to help people find jobs. So if I can make it free for job seekers and just make the companies pay, that's going to be a win-win in my opinion. So with this new idea and a lot of thoughts turning around in my head, I needed to validate this idea with the people looking for jobs. So I immediately created a YouTube poll and I said, hey, how interested would you be in an online career fair? Like if this is something that was available to you, even if you don't have a college degree, like for anyone, how interested would you be? And over 90% of the people that responded, responded with some type of positive response. So immediately I knew, okay, 90% of the people that responded to this poll enjoyed it. And there was a lot of responses to the poll. So I immediately knew this was a good idea because the job board idea had like less than 50%. It was like less than 30% even people that responded positively while this was over 90% of people. So I knew immediately this idea was absolutely way better than the previous idea. And I knew I had to go with this idea. Now, one thing that I wish I had done earlier was actually try to talk to companies as well see if they would be interested in the idea as well. This is something I completely neglected. I thought, okay, you know what? If I bring good enough candidates from my YouTube platform and I bring a good solid product, it's gonna be easy to get companies to sign up for this. And that's something I completely neglected. So if at the beginning I had done some more research, talked to more companies, I could have validated this idea even more to make sure it was not only an idea that the job seekers are looking for, but also that the companies are looking for because if no companies sign up, it's a pretty useless career fair. Now you may think now that I have a validated idea that I think is gonna be good, I'm immediately gonna jump into writing code, but you'd be completely wrong. The next step is to actually brainstorm what the MVP is going to look like. That just means the minimum viable product. Essentially, what is the smallest application I can make that still is an online career fair? So in my head, I was just kind of churning through ideas like what are the core features I need? And I started thinking, you know, I need user accounts. Obviously, people need to be able to sign up to the application. I need to have some type of profile. This profile needs like a resume, years of experience, and just like basic information that every single employer cares about. Things like where this candidate lives and how much experience they have and what their resume is. Those are like the main three-ish things I was thinking of at the time. And I also need to have a way for companies to create accounts. They need to be able to invite team members. They need to be able to post the jobs that are going to be a part of this career fair. And then obviously, most importantly, I need a way for the candidates to talk to one another face-to-face -face, virtually through the computer, like a Zoom meeting essentially. So this is kind of my idea. Okay, I have users, they have profiles, I have companies, they have jobs, and then I have a way for these people to talk together. And my whole idea with how the career fair works is I wanna make it as similar to a normal career fair. So I just wanna have, you know, you sign in on the day of the career fair, you see all the different companies, and you just go up to one of the companies and click, you know, join, and then as soon as there's no one else in queue, you can join and talk to someone at that company, and then you move on to the next company. Just like if you're at a career fair, walking from booth to booth, you're just joining virtual rooms instead. That's kind of my whole idea. So I started to do some research, like how feasible is this? Because if for some reason I can't create some type of virtual Zoom-like experience, obviously the application is going to be useless. 
So I started researching, trying to find ways to do video communication, and I ended up stumbling upon Twilio. They have their own video API. It seemed like the pricing was pretty fair. The actual API was fairly easy to use, just based on looking at the documentation, and it seemed to do everything I want. So I was like, okay, you know what? That's going to be the route that I go. I'm going to do the Twilio API for video. And then the rest of it is just basic stuff, user profile, company profile, that doesn't really need anything special. I validated that the video portion was possible though. I didn't actually write any code to test it, but I saw that the tools were out there and the API was there so I could use it. Now the final step was to take my MVP and minimize it even further. There's a lot of things in this MVP. We have users, profiles, companies, team members, invites, career fairs, video chats, all these different things. I realized Really, the only thing I need to get started with this application is sign up and sign in, obviously, because you need to create a user account. I need to be able to create profiles for users. I need to be able to sign in as a company and create a profile there. And from there, I actually don't even need the career fair process implemented in order to actually have people sign up. And that's because let's say the career fair is going to be three months from today. Well, I could build out the application, get people to sign up right now. I could release it today. And then three months from now, all I have to do is in that three month time period, build out the actual career fair logic so it'll work. But it doesn't need to be there because the career fair doesn't happen until after people sign up. So that was my thought. What I'm gonna do, the very first thing I'm gonna do is build out just the basic user features, creating profiles, signing in, signing up, and then the career fair stuff can come later. That way I can get people to sign up right away before I even have the career fair portion working. And this is my entire thought process leading up to before I write the first line of code. Now, if you want to see what happens when I start writing the first bits of code, you're going to have to check out the next devlog. It's going to be linked over here when it's ready. And also, if you have any suggestions for the project, please let me know. And if you want to check out the project, I'll have a link down in the description to the actual careerfair.dev website. That said, thank you very much for watching and have a good day.